we're going to talk about covert narcissists, the kind that are the do-gooders, the sneaky um, ones who are very communal and very social and seem to always get away with it, and the ones that are charming and sort of fake, humble, and all of that. This was a request by one of you guys out there asking me to talk about this topic. My name is Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand, recover from, and transform your life after talk relationships, narcissism, and all of that in your life. The covert narcissist. This is a topic <laughs> I could go on for days about because I've been exposed to many. The covert narcissist often appears like a good guy when you first meet them. They are the type that will have friends, that will have people that seem to genuinely like them, that will be out there doing good things in the world. They're often very communal narcissists where they gather people in groups, right? So they're they're involved in things where they have some sort of status or some, not status so much as of a role within a community. They're usually the helper and the good guy and the, the fixer and the nice person. And their friends often see them as very nice and humble because here's the thing, their friends do not live with them. <laughs> their friends do not have the experience of the unmasking that happens when their mask falls off and they behave like spoiled children and they behave in ways when they don't get their way like the world is out to get them and when in the twisting of truth and the way a covert narcissist can gaslight like no one else so let's talk about that have any of you guys been around one of these people it is no fun it's not that we need to like run around telling everyone how bad someone else is and like making sure everyone knows they're a narcissist. I mean, yeah, sometimes that would feel good, but that's not really the goal or what we're looking for. What we're looking for is validation that you're not crazy and that these things that this person are doing, which we're going to talk about in a second, actually are happening. And that, yes, it happens to other people. So it's not because of you. It's because of the way that toxic person interacts with other people. But we don't get that, do we? Because most people don't see it. All right. Or if they do, they don't want to get involved because this is this low level narcissism, which is actually very high level narcissism. <laughs> if you think about it, where the covert narcissist who is this way needs to believe that they are this way. This is the, the delusion that they've told themselves about who they are. They are the perpetual victim. They are the perpetual misunderstood, the one that no one's ever gotten, the one that's never had chances, you know, and the thing is we relate to it because when we meet them or when we're talking to them and we don't see the narcissism yet, there's a lot of things they say that you can relate to. Like, like maybe you're a scapegoat in your family and you are misunderstood hundred percent. No one's ever seen you for who you are and you try and you try and you try and you're not toxic. You actually care about other people and you care in your relationships to make sure the other person's point of view is included and that you are being fair to them, right? And you have empathy for them. And so when you hear someone say, oh my gosh, all my life I've always felt so misunderstood. Boom. It's like a commonality, right? And the thing is, you can't tell from a statement like that, just that statement itself, whether the person has been also, you know, scapegoated or or just misunderstood in their life, had people that, you know, didn't get them around. Or if they're using that information, which may or may not be true for that narcissist, to manipulate you. It's very hard to see. And because see, a covert narcissist who acts this way, what they've done is instead of taking the grandiose traits that get attention, the boastfulness that gets attention, the I'm better than everyone else, so get out of my way, you know, that the, 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 the more overt narcissist has. Instead of being like that in life, they've taken the humble road. They've taken the quiet path. Oh, if I'm friendly, everyone gives me attention. So it's not, oh, if I'm friendly, the world's a better place. They might say, I'm friendly and the world's a better place, but what, on the inside, when you and the reason we know this is because when they gaslight, you can see they're not listening to you. They're not taking your side into consideration. They're not taking you as a human being into consideration. It's all about the win. So, and that comes later, right? That comes once you know who they are. Once you've questioned something, once you've said, hey, why, why this feels really one-sided. What's happening here? 
And they say, oh, does it? Because see, they know the words. They know the words that interrupts their delusion of themselves and forces them to have to take some look at themselves. And when they're exposed to those words, they gaslight, they hide, they deflect, they project, okay? And they do it in a way where you're the only one that sees it. No one else is gonna see it because they won't do it to just anyone. They will only do it where they feel safe. When you're with someone like this, they will build the relationship up in a way where there's a lot of commonality in the beginning and there's a lot of fun and friendliness and you, you get all of the good that they give to everybody else for a while. And then what happens is as they are comfortable with you and as they do no longer believe that you'll just walk away, they flip it so that you are underneath and you start fearing they'll walk away. They need that control in order to feel secure about themselves so that they can maintain your supply as well as their own control over that supply. And because that's what all narcissists do, only they do it in a way where they're humble and nice and they maintain that persona for everybody else. But with you, you get the gaslighting, you get the projecting, you get the grumpy moods, you get the withholding. There is so much cognitive dissonance when you're dealing with someone like this because in the rest of their life, often, the majority of the time, they are that good person. So you believe there's something to work on in yourself. And so it's more than trauma bonds. It's a miss. I don't even want to, I don't even know what to call it, like a misinterpretation of what's going on within yourself. So, and you, and you think it's you. And because you're an empathic and, and intelligent person who wants to better themselves, well, you're going to dive right in and try everything and, and squirm and scramble and feel terrible and feel like you are responsible for the whole thing. Okay, so if you're with a covert narcissist and you have an argument, a regular argument might go like this. How come you didn't do the dishes? This is a dumb argument, okay? But it's usually a dumb argument, right? How come you didn't do the dishes? You said you were gonna. And the narcissistic, or and then a person would say, oh, I forgot. My bad, I'll do them right now. And you say, well, this is like the third time I'm kind of upset. Could you please make sure you do the dishes? And so, cause you're mad, right? Like, you're like, this is enough, okay. And they say, yeah, I'm, I need to take responsibility for that. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay, right? Like, if someone were saying that to me and I did do it a few times, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I gotcha. Is there a way I can resolve this right now? I'm happy to do them right now. You know, can we take a break and not be angry with each other? Can we, can we talk about the anger part after I do the dishes, <laughs> right? Like we can, and then yes, and then no, and then you have, so you, you work together, right? through the anger, through the, whatever it is. Covert narcissist, he's, well, why didn't you do the dishes? And they say, what dishes? You mean the ones that are there? Why didn't you do the dishes? Well, you said you were gonna do them. Well, how often do you not do things that you're supposed to do? I guess I'll do, I'll, I guess I have to, fine. I mean, I guess I'm the bad one, right? Like, I guess what, a, and they go into this tailspin of becoming the victim, becoming, they twist it. There's never, and especially, oh my gosh, especially when it is something so subtle of character, right? When you're questioning something about the way they're doing something when it comes to emotions or character, they get highly defensive. And when a covert narcissist gets highly defensive, instead of yelling and screaming at you, they might, they might have a temper tantrum, but most likely what they're gonna do is shut down. And in that shutdown, become the victim to where all of a sudden you are feeling completely gaslit and completely like befuddled. And at the same time, you're like, okay, what can I do to fix this? How can I help you? What is the matter? What's going on? I can see that you're really hurt. <laughs> Because you're trying all the tactics of nonviolent communication or, you know, basic human communication. And you're trying all of the methods that would work and would be beneficial in a healthy relationship. And they're sitting there feeding off it. They won't give an inch when they're like that. And right in that moment, you say you are not the nice person you claim to be. Right? You see it. You see it in those moments. But then boom, they bounce back, you're left in a puddle, there's no apologies or no rectifying anything on their end, and on they go with their merry day, being nice to everybody else, right? Okay, or the covert narcissist who is this way, when they are in 
a silent treatment or a gaslighting phase, or whatever is going on when they're in devaluing you and they're in the devalue cycle. And it seems like they're baiting arguments a lot with you. And at the same time, they might pick up the phone and talk to a friend and be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. like they're super happy. And then they hang up and they're like, and they're angry with you again. So it's like they boom, boom. And you watch this changing uh, persona, right? A flash before you, or you have an argument or some upset, and then you go out with friends and suddenly they're their happy, jovial self again. You think, oh my gosh, everything's better. They're even being nice to you in public. They're even like, hey, can I get you some, can you get you this? Can I do that, right? And they're put their hand or arm around you or they're holding your hand or whatever they're doing, right? And then the second you get in the car, boom, it shuts off. And you can see they were putting on a face or they're putting on two faces because what they did is in front of people, they got supply for how amazing they are to you, right? And they got the supply from you of, oh my gosh, you like me again. And then when you get in the car, boom, they get the supply of, oh my gosh, you're the victim. I've hurt you so much. Look what I've done to you. I'm a terrible person and you feel guilt and you feel, and you feel conflicted and you don't know what to think. All right. So yeah, having been there with a covert narcissist, you see the potential so much more than you do with an overt narcissist. You see the potential for how they could be if only they gave to whatever about someone else, right? If only they could care a little bit about, about other people for real. And the thing is, they're pretending they do. And so they know all the right words to say. They know all the right moves to make and all the right actions to take to make it look like they are an empathic person. Super frustrating, isn't it? And and very um, toxic to be around. So what do you guys got? What do you experience? Let me know in the comments. What is your experience with all of this? Have you been around someone who acts this way? And what are some examples you can help share with other people so that they don't feel so alone? Because I know from experience and I know from speaking to as many people as I've spoken to through coaching, this is a very isolating place. This is a very lonely place. And this is a very confusing place to have this kind of relationship with someone going on. I'll say that there is coaching available in group coaching. So check it out in the main description of every video, because sometimes this requires some talking through to get your own mind around what's really going on. It's not simple. Okay. It's not just like, oh, yeah, just, you know, you can see it now go because I'm saying it really as clear as I can. And if you've been there, you know what I mean? But when you're in it, there's a whole, it's like a smoke screen happens, right? There's a whole lot of mixed emotions and conflicting things going on at the same time. And a whole lot of the guilt tripping that makes you feel shame and guilt for your own responses to them. And, and there's a whole lot of reactionary responses. Another thing a uh, covert narcissist like this will do is create reaction in you. They, this is it's number one gaslighting MO, right? Is to get you to react, to get you to react because then what? Then we can talk all about how you reacted. <laughs> and you can, they can spend the whole rest of the night, day, week, whatever, talking about how you reacted not why you reacted, not how you were pushed, not how it was like endless, relentless gaslighting. No, just how you reacted. And my guess is you're going to react a little bit big when things like that happen. And even if you don't, all you have to do is say one wrong word, one wrong word, one word that sounds like something, you know, unless they see you're the toxic one. Why are you so talking? You're just another person who doesn't understand me. Another person who's going to victimize me, who's going to make me the bad guy when all I do is be nice. Okay. So, and that's, this is what they do. And when you are in it, I mean, most people will, who come to me to talk about this when they are either leaving or trying to leave will ask me over and over again, who was right? Who was right? Let me tell you that what happened. I'll try to tell it as clear as I can. And I can hear in their voice, they're not elaborating or exaggerating. They're just telling it like a story. And that was it me? Was it did, was I wrong? And you can hear where the gaslighting takes over, right? In the story, you're like, no, you weren't wrong. That was gaslighting. It's really hard to resist a reaction to that. Of course you reacted. 
It was what it was for. The whole point of gaslighting, you guys, is to get you to stop talking about the thing that's important for communication growth and relationship and to get you to start reacting. And then you can talk about the thing that you did instead. So that the covert narcissist, I believe they this type of covert narcissist who is the humble, friendly, helper, do-gooder, you know what I'm talking about if you've been around them, okay? They are the more insecure and fearful of abandonment and fearful of um, other people not liking them and really trying to prove themselves to the world types. And so they can't look at the things because they lack the empathy and they lack the actions of self-improvement that come from relating to other people, right? They can't look at the things they need to change. And let me tell you, everybody in relationship has something <laughs> that's going to need to be worked on, right? And so when we, we then will say something, whatever it is, the first time they have a shutdown, you're like, oh my gosh, that's really sensitive and you feel really bad. Oh, okay. The second time, oh, they're shutting down again. By about the fourth or fifth time, you're like, they're gaslighting me. Okay, they're gaslighting me because then they start the flip and then they escalate and they escalate. You know, they, they can't, they're so unable to face what it is that you're saying to them that they're going to gaslight project and create the victim mentality so that then they have to be catered to and cared for. And you basically have to grovel to get them to be friendly and nice again. Cause look what you did. You took this friendly and nice person and they're just, they're just so distraught that they're behaving in this way. It's, it's endless. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.